All right, we've already looked at the value of A and the value of B when it comes to the graphs of sine and cosine. So remember, A, when you take the absolute value, gives us the amplitude. So that tells us how we multiply our Y value. And B, when we do 2 pi divided by B, tells us the length of the period for the sine or the cosine function. We're going to add in the value of C today, which helps us to determine the phase shift. So every example that we looked at before, the graph started at the origin, at zero. So what we're gonna be looking at today is the value of C is going to shift the graph over either to the right or to the left. So the way that we calculate the phase shift is we take C divided by B. And remember I said before, B always goes on the bottom, B on the bottom. So it's two pi divided by B to get the period, and then it's C divided by B to determine the phase shift. Also notice, now we've seen this several times before, the formula has a minus in it. So that means you always have to flip C to its opposite, okay? So if that said 2x minus pi, then the value of C would be pi, not negative pi, okay? The rules are exactly the same for the graph of cosine. And then the process from there out is exactly the same. We have to build our table slightly differently because it's no longer gonna start at zero. We'll take the period, we'll figure out what a quarter of the period is, and we take our new starting point, which is what the phase shift calculates, and that's where we add the quarter period, add the quarter period, add the quarter period, okay? So let's look at a couple of examples. Okay. Number eight says, determine the amplitude period and phase shift of y equals one half the cosine of four x plus pi, then graph one period of the function. So we wanna work alphabetically as we work through. So we'll start by doing the exact same things we've done before. We'll find the value of a. A is gonna be equal to one half, which means the amplitude is also equal to one half, so this is gonna be a short squat looking graph, okay? Then we need to figure out the period. The period is gonna be two pi divided by b, which in this case is four, so that comes out to be pi half. So this is gonna happen really fast. The whole cosine graph is gonna happen in the length of pi halves. Now, we need one fourth of the period to know what to count by. So one fourth of, whoops, not pi fourths, pi halves is gonna be pi eighths. That's what we're gonna count by in our table. Now we need to figure out the phase shift, okay? So the phase shift is C divided by B. This function says plus pi, so that means C is gonna be negative pi over b, which is the exact same as it was before, so that's four, and that doesn't simplify it. So the phase shift is negative pi fourths, which means that's where our table is going to start. So we'll set up our x and our y, and our table is not gonna start at zero, it's gonna start at negative pi fourths. And now here's where this gets a little bit tricky because we need to add pi eighths over and over again. So I need to have a common denominator to be able to add. So if I multiply this by two over two, this is equal to negative pi eighths. I'm gonna kind of do this in eighths out to the side and then we'll simplify as we need to. So, um, sorry, that's gonna be negative two pi eighths. So now we're gonna add pi eighths and we're gonna add until we get our five key points. So if I add pi eighths, now I have negative one pi eighths, then I have zero, and then I have one pi eighths, and then I have two pi eighths again, okay? Now let's simplify down where we can. Negative pi eighths does not simplify, so we'll just bring that over. Zero does not simplify, pi eighths does not simplify, but two pi eighths is pi fourths. 
That is the hard part. That is the only thing different when you change the phase shift. So now we're gonna go through the exact same process we've done before. This is a cosine function. So the cosine curve starts at one, zero, negative one, zero, and one. And now we need to adjust for the amplitude. So we're gonna take our value of a, which was positive one half, and multiply all of the y's by one half. So we get one half, zero, negative one half, zero, and one half again. And now we are ready to sketch this graph. Now I've got positives and negatives here, so we're just gonna set this up so that we can see both sides. Um, I'm just gonna go up to one because we only have to get to a half, one and negative one. And then we have got, uh, let's make this negative pi eighths and negative pi fourths and then positive pi eighths and positive pi fourths. Just set up kind of a rough sketch of the axes on your own. Um, I don't give a lot of labels once we start changing the phase shift because it ends up counting by something weird. So it's easier just to set it up on your own. So negative pi fourths starts at positive one half and then zero and then negative one half, zero, one half. It only asked us to graph one period. And so here we go. Remember, it should always flatten out at the top because it's one piece of sort of that wave, it should be the, the rounded side of half of the hill. And so there is your graph, okay? So let's go ahead and look at number nine. Amplitude period and phase shift for this graph. So again, we're gonna go through and calculate the value of A, B, and C, and then use those to determine the amplitude, period, and phase shift. So here is what we get. All right, here is what we get. A is four, which makes the amplitude four. The period is two pi divided by two, so we get pi, which means our quarter period is pi fourths. That's what we are gonna count by. The phase shift is two pi thirds divided by B again, which is two. And when you keep change flip, we get pi thirds for our phase shift. So again, we set up our table, x, y. I think my internet is kind of slow at home right now because my um, screen is lagging, so I hope it doesn't look weird on your end. So we're gonna start at pi thirds. Now again, we have to add pi fourths to that because that's what our quarter period is. So we need to get a common denominator. And like I said, I always kind of do that. This is usually my like common denominator column is out here to the side. So if I multiply this by four over four, we get four pi twelfths, okay? Because third and fourth, our common denominator would be twelfths. Now counting by pi fourths, if I multiply by three over three, I get three pi twelfths is what we're counting by. So that's what I'm gonna add in that green column. And then, like I said before, we'll go back and simplify afterwards. So I get seven pi twelfths, 10 pi twelfths, um, 13 pi twelfths. How many is that, four? We need one more, 16 pi twelfths. And now let's go back and simplify wherever we can. Ta-da, all simplified. This is a sine curve, so we start on zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, and then since the amplitude is four, well, A is also four, we're gonna multiply, so zero, four, zero, negative four, zero. And now we need to set up our axes. Now, they're all positive, so I don't need to worry about being on the negative side. So it'll look something like this. Now, I think because we're counting by twelfths, that might be kind of the easiest way to mark this out. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, but we have to go out to 16. Okay, so the common denominator piece is kind of helpful. We've got to go out to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where pi thirds is. And then 1, 2, 3 is 7 pi twelfths. 1, 2, 3 is 10 pi twelfths, which is 5 pi sixths. 1, 2, 3, 13 pi twelfths. And then 1, 2, 3 is 16 pi twelfths, which is 4 pi thirds. That's just, to me, I think the easiest way to mark it out. And then we're going up to 4 and down to negative 4 on this graph. So there we go. And now we come in here and we plot the points. So at pi thirds, we are at 0. 7 pi twelfths, we are at 4, and then 0, and then negative 4, and then back to 0. One period of the sine curve right there. Okay, so again, what that phase shift does is it shifts us over either to the left or to the right, and it's the exact same rules. Remember, we said with our function transformations, f of x minus h moves us to the right, and f of x plus h moves us to the left. It's that exact same idea of having to do the opposite sign. So here we had minus two-thirds, and that ended up moving us to the right. Okay, so that is what that is going to look like. Vertical shifts is the last thing to talk about, and all that does is move the graph up or down. So um, we're just going to take after we multiply our y values, then we're going to add d to all of those y values after that. Now I just picked one without a phase shift just to make it a little bit quicker to graph. So again, we'll start with all the same information as before. Okay, so the only thing new here is this value for d. And d is going to be whatever you add or subtract at the end. It's exactly the same as with our functions when we did f of x plus or minus k. That shifted your graph up or down. Now, I know that this is d and not c because there's no parentheses here. If there was parentheses, then c would be positive 1. But without the parentheses, that means that the cosine is finished. And now we're on to a new number, okay? Um, Notice again, since b is 1, the period is just 2 pi. And since there is no phase shift, we're going to start at 0 just like before. So let's set up our table. All right. So this is like the standard table that we learned right at the very beginning. The period hasn't changed and the phase shift hasn't changed. So 0 to 2 pi counting by pi halves. Cosine starts at 1, so we're going to set up our table like that. Now, the first thing that we need to do is change the amplitude. So we need to do a times y, so that's a half. So we get now 1 half and 0 and negative 1 half and 0 and positive 1 half. Now the last column that we add to this table is now we need plus or minus d. So we need to take our new y values this time and we need to subtract 1 since d was negative 1. So from all of these numbers, we need to do minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1. So I'm taking all of the blue numbers and subtracting 1, okay? This is the down 1 part of our graph, okay? So... Let's go ahead and set up our graph here. So we have 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. We only need to go, well, let's see. Negative 3 halves is really negative 1 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to negative 2. Eh, let's fix this one a little bit. That's a little bit too high. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna use the green numbers to graph. So at zero, we need to be at negative one half. And then at pi halves, we need to be at negative one. 
at pi, we need to be at negative 3 halves, which is negative 1 and a half, and then back to negative 1, and then back to negative 1 half. So this graph looks like this. Okay. Now, the original graph would have been right here. Let's put this in like a light gray. So it would have looked like this. But we've shifted it down one, and so that's why we've ended up now where we are. This, the idea of the midline, all of the examples we've looked at so far, the midline, sort of like where it averages out, have been on the x-axis. But now this one is going to have a midline somewhere kind of like this. Okay, and it's not perfectly parallel, but that's where the x-axis would have gone through and then we slid it up or down. Okay, so that is the last piece that you need to be aware of. So remember, you're gonna work through alphabetically. A, figure out the amplitude. B, figure out the period, quarter period to count by. C, helps you figure out the phase shift. And then D is the last thing you do to move it up or down. And so that is what you get to practice today.